Hi, welcome back. Now in, in this section of the videos, I'm going to discuss integrating the four M's into your platform. Uh, those are the nostalgia pieces that are uh, called the uh, monorail, one of these babies, the moonliner, one of these guys, um, the marquee, and lastly, the Monsanto piece all into your platform. That's what I call them the four M's. They're all just coincidentally named for the M. So um, now uh, I've already done a video series on how to integrate the marquee and you can find it at uh, this address right here um, on, on uh, YouTube. And, uh, uh, and so I'm going to just talk about the three other pieces uh, to, uh, for this video. And I'm going to start with the monorail. All right, we're starting with the monorail. Now, now my installation of the monorail is, is a little bit different than the standard uh, Olszewski monorail kit. Um, the standard kit comes with five of the columns, and I use six. Um, I just liked how six worked out better because of the spacing. The, the spacing when you use six is exactly the same spacing as the static display, so the lights hit the monorail car a little bit better. Um, and that's the first difference, six columns. The second difference is I use a curved beam where the Olszewski piece was straight. And I'll show you a better view of that. All right, here's a shot of the curved beam. Um, you know, the, the, the monorail as it travels in front of the actual park is actually curved e even more dramatically than this. Um, but this is about the, the most curve that you can get and still fit in the little space we have on the platform. Um, and uh, I just like the curved look. There's just way too many straight lines out here, and I like the, the, the bent look. Um, that uh, now, uh, obviously, we're using a different beam that comes in the standard kit, and uh, I'll show you uh, with the first step about how to bend the beam to make this shape, and uh, let's uh, see that right now. All right, so now we're going to bend the PVC into the shape we want, and uh, that uh, this is a little harder than you might think because um, the plastic is quite springy. In fact, these H columns are designed intentionally not to bend uh, and to hold their shape. Um, so we need to use a little convincing to, uh, or a little persuading, I'll say, to, to get this thing to bend. And uh, I'm going to be using a, a fairly hot heat gun to heat it up to get it to, uh, to uh, to uh, get the shape we want. And uh, you got to be patient with this step. It takes a few minutes to get it to, to bend and hold its shape. And uh, I'll just I'll give you at least one idea of how to do it. Um, I'm, I'm here in my kitchen because the, the, the stone will tolerate heat better than my office does. So uh, well, we'll see what happens here. I'm just moving back and forth across the nozzle the heat gun. I'm using my fingers and my thumbs to shape the beam. You actually have to get the thing pretty hot for it to start to bend. It's uh, pretty interesting how, how warm it has to get. And then I'll put it back on something flat just to make sure that it's not uh, working on us. And you'll see if it starts to bend unevenly. Alright, so I'm going to let it cool off here, holding it in its shape. I've got it out of the heat now just to get it to cool off. <coughs> if I were to let go too soon, it would just spring right back to shape. So. Okay, so you notice we got it's 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 got a little bit of a shape, but it's kind of irregular. It's got this kind of weird elongated part. So I'm going to get this part a little warmer this time and see if I can't get that to hold its its bend. Otherwise, the bends look kind of okay. So let's let's work on this part here to get the bend and. Uh, It's really hard to get the heat even across the beam.
All right, so let's see what we're doing now. Yeah, so the radius is looking better, but that's not bad, really. In fact, that's just about what you want. You just want enough. Let me make sure it keeps its being its bend here. You want just enough of a bend to just to give a the flavor that the track is arcing through there. We we don't have enough room on the platform uh, to make it to have the actual bend of the attraction, but at least we can get pretty close here uh, to give a flavor of it. I'm I've, uh, I'm putting it on a on a piece of flat uh, uh, material here, so I can see how it's how it's doing. Make sure it doesn't warp. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that looks looks all right. Um, good. And you'll notice that as you do this, that that. That it will actually the track will twist a little bit one way or the other, or the beam will actually twist slightly. That's really good because the actual beam in the front of the park is actually slanted so that the train can be flat going around. So what you're going to do is it's it's just fine if it twists a little bit, um, and you'll, you'll actually use that twisted side as as to to help the monorail lean into the turn as it goes around uh, as as what as, as you will. So um, that's that's really it. Now that we've got the beam shaped, now we need to cut the uh, uh, slots in the beam to receive the um, the columns. You know, so columns have this little key in the top of them, this little pin, ridge key thingy. So we're going to need to cut a little uh, uh, same shaped cut in the beam to receive it. And so what I've done now is I've I've marked on the beam um, where the six columns will go, and these are marked at uh, 4.6 inches apart, um, and uh, that's that turns out to be the exactly the same spacing as the standalone display of the monorails. And the nice thing about this the spacing is that the two LEDs will illuminate the monorail car, where with the uh, monorail kit spacing. The two LEDs don't really light up the car up right up the train. You you can really only light it up with one LED. So that's the reason why I like this closer spacing, um, so that the the uh, the trains are lit better. Um, so two four point six inches apart. That leaves uh, two point three inches on each end. So two point three, four point six, four point six, and so forth. And uh, now we just uh, make the cuts. And so you just. Pull out your your handy dandy Dremel tool, and the trick here is to cut exactly in the middle of the beam, and that way um, uh, you won't see it when you're done because it'll be it'll, the uh, the slice the cut you're making is almost exactly the same width as the uh, center part of the beam. So, um, so if you're careful and you just cut right in the middle, and you cut just enough for the pin to fit in, then you should be perfect. Just for the cut. Oh, sorry, man, I was walking it again. Okay, so it's not quite wide enough. Now we get to widen the cut a little bit. Almost there. It's a little bit wider. Okay, we're getting there. Now just a little bit deeper.
you're better off going really slow on this so you don't make mistakes. I'm going to take out the tape now. Let's see what I'm doing any better. Okay, let's go a little deeper. And that's perfect. <coughs> so now you have the the beam sitting in there just perfectly. And uh, so you just repeat the same cut all the way around. And you can see that it doesn't leave any marks on the inside. And uh, just trim off the extra little schmutz there. And uh, keep cutting and you'll be, you'll be good to go. All right, so now I've painted the beam with the road color um, in the light shade and uh, a couple of coats because the plastic takes a bit to coat. And I'm going to use the beam itself as a template to place where we're going to put the columns. Um, and as you probably know, we're going to be putting six of these to hold the beam up. And uh, so we're going to use the beam itself as a template for that. And just, you know, lay the beam down on the platform <coughs> and uh, um, you can see where I'm going to put it. Um, and then just make sure it's centered and make sure you have enough room for the columns to sit because, you know, the columns themselves have a little bit of space um, to them. And, uh, um, and then make your measurements. Remember the way my beam worked out is that I was 2.3 inches in from the edge for my first post. So I'll make a mark there in the platform. Let me show you that again. <laughs> so we're going to measure in the 2.3 the inches as I measured mine. And then we're going to put a mark on the outside of the beam there. And then on mine I put these 4.6 inches apart. So every 4.6 inches you're going to make a mark and you work, away, work your way around the, uh, the beam. Um, so now, once, once, the, once the outer edge of the beam is marked, um, now we have to mark where the, where the holes are going to go for the uh, columns. And if you notice, <coughs> um, you want the, the LEDs on the outside of the column as it, as it faces north. Um, sorry, that would be south. <laughs> um, and, um, and if you measure how far, if you look in underneath the, uh, you'll see the LED is offset from the center of the post. It's offset by a quarter of an inch, um, at least as I've been measuring it. Try it again. Yeah, a quarter of an inch. And so we need to have the hole drilled a quarter of an inch uh, offset from the center of the post. Um, now, this, the beam itself is a quarter of an inch wide. So, so this mark that we put on the, on the, on the on the, the platform, since it was on the edge of the beam, that means that the center of the beam was going to be an eighth of an inch in, right? Eighth of an inch in, that would be half of the width of the beam, that's where the center would be. But since we want the hole to be a quarter of an inch out from the center, <laughs> that means that <coughs> we have to measure an eighth of an inch out from our mark, and that's where the, uh, where the hole has to go. So, set my nifty gauge for eighth. And make a mark. And that's where the hole is going to go. And so uh, I'll go ahead and mark these and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got a mark. So my original mark, hopefully you can see it in the video, but you can see my original mark here. And this is the mark 1 8 inch out. And so now we're ready to drill some holes. Um, I'll, I'll be using a 5 16th inch bit, um, um, but I don't want to start off with that bit because these big bits tend to jump around um, and slide out of uh, and move away from where they were supposed to start. So I'm going to go with I'm going to start with a little smaller bit to get the hole started. Alright, and 
and then we'll switch to the bigger bit. And finish the hole. And uh, so you just uh, repeat this process uh, as you go around the, uh, the platform and uh, your holes will be all set to go. All right, now that we have the holes drilled, now it's time to start setting the uh, columns in. Um, I'm going to set them in just for a test fit here at first. Um, some things about the columns, make sure, when you look at the leads, make sure that they aren't shorted out like these two. <laughs> Because that will uh, that will ruin your whole day. So make sure those are okay. And uh, we're going to dry fit this thing once just to make sure it'll all fit right. And um, so just uh, uh, drop these things down through there. Now this five sixteenths inch bit is just barely big enough for the wire to fit through. You know, I like keeping the holes, especially these holes, really small. Um, and so sometimes the connectors might need a little coaxing to go through. There's this one. That's good. Now, the next thing to remember too about the, the columns is that they have different length wires. Um, these, these two that I have in my hands here have the really long wires. These you want to put on the two ends and the two with the next longest wires um, you're going to want to put kind of obviously the next ones in um, and uh, and then the shortest wires put in the middle the reason why you have to do this is <laughs> um, so that all of them will reach the lighting board for the monorail so anyway work your way around the platform stick the columns in and i'll be right back <laughs> so now we have the uh, the beam kind of dry fit. The, uh, the the pillars haven't been attached down yet, and uh, now we just want to um, look at where the columns are sitting as they sit um, under the um, under the beam, and we want to just um, you know see where it wants to sit naturally. Um, and uh, realize that each one is going to be twisted kind of its own angle. Um, and uh, then make sure we like where they're sitting. And um, then we're going to make uh, some marks with some tape uh, that will indicate where we like them. And uh, that uh, this tape is going to come in handy later because when we, when we go to attach the columns, uh, we're not going to have the rail attached, we're not going to have the beam attached as a reference and when you push the columns down you get kind of one shot at it um, so uh, you want to make sure it's located in the right place and so there you can see this one um, I'm going to put the tape right flush even with this edge of the column at the same angle that it wants to sit at and then we're going to make some marks this right. I'll put some marks on it to show where it's going to sit. All right, and you just repeat this process as you go around, making sure we're happy where the whole thing is going down. And then after this is done, then we can attach the columns permanently. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Before you attach them down, <laughs> make sure they all work. <laughs> I just uh, uh, found one that had uh, shorted out on me, uh, which would have been a real problem if I had found that out after I had uh, put them in. So, yep, big, make sure they work before you stick them down. Okay, so now we're going to stick down the columns, and this is the easiest part. You just uh, pull off the, uh, the tab. Pull it out from the wires. Make sure the platform is clean underneath it. You've got your straight edge and your marks. Line it up. And 
and then push it down. Doesn't get too much easier than that. Just uh, do that for the others, and uh, you're ready to put the, the beam back on. All right, so now we're just going to snap the uh, beam back on. And there you have it. Your nice curved monorail beam ready for your monorail to sew in. And that wraps up, uh, oh, it doesn't quite wrap up the monorail section. I still need to show you how to connect the power to it, which I'll do right now. All right, so now we're going to um, make two modifications to the monorail board. Um, and like I said, uh, adding the sixth column is certainly your choice. Um, that uh, um, not not necessary. Um, I do it certainly just for the look. Um, so that, that's the first thing I'll demonstrate. The second thing I'll demonstrate is how to disable the timers on uh, these little boards. And uh, so with that, uh, let's get started. Um, that uh, this little board got a little bit uh, messy for manufacturing. So we'll just clean some of the goop up here a little bit. And the first thing you need to do is is on the monorail board you'll see that they have five of these black wires installed that uh, and we need to clean off a, uh, a pad to, to attach uh, another wire. Oh, this one looks as good as any. So just uh, they, they put uh, I think this is hot glue on there to protect the leads. Um, you don't need it, just pull it off. Um, there we go. So now I've got a pad to add another black wire. And now we've also exposed a, uh, a uh, hole for a new resistor that we have to put in. So uh, now what we have to do is, is just clear the solder out of that hole. So you're just going to use a normal solder sucker and pull out the solder. Sometimes this can be tricky. It depends on how the solder got in there. One more on this one. That should be okay. So uh, I'm just gonna see if I can get the bleed through. Oh yes, we can. Perfect. <coughs> so now on the top side of the board, we're gonna drop a uh, resistor in. On the on the monorail cord, the LEDs are 68 ohm resistors. Um, and uh, because they're 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 designed to be super bright, you know, on, on the front of the piece, since these are all amber LEDs, you know, I, I'm I'm okay with with using these in their super bright setting. Um, if you if a purist might want to drop these down from 68 ohms down to something more like you know four or five hundred ohms, just to tone them down. But but uh, I'm just going to leave them uh, at uh, their uh, their uh, 68 ohm setting. So just drop the resistor in there. Um, make sure you drop the resistor in with the bottom towards the wires. Um, that, that way uh, it uh, minimizes a short circuit potential. Um, all right, then from this side, just bend the leads over and solder them in. But, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And the pad wants to flow. There it is. Good. All right, and now we'll cut off the excess of the leads. Hang on to those little excess wires because we're going to use one of them in a second. All right, so now the excess is off. <clears throat> we have the new resistor installed. That's perfect. You don't have to worry about the wires um, on this side shorting out because they're all tied together on the side of the board anyway. So, But this side of the resistors, you have to be careful of that they don't touch together. Otherwise, you could damage some of the LEDs. OK, now on this side, we're going to attach the black wire um, adjacent to that resistor that we just put in. Now this can be kind of frustrating because the wires never want to stay put. 
So maybe this one will cooperate for me. Let's see. It's pretty close to the one. Just a little nervous that they got a little too close to his partner here. Let's make sure they're not touching. I'll check that with a meter. There's not much room to work in, and so I just want to make sure that these are not touching here because they were very close. And they are not touching good, okay. And uh, now we solder in the red wire, which goes over on this pad over here. The red wires all go together. The red wires are all in that uh, that, uh, that common bus. Oops, there it is. The red wires are all together on that common bus there. All right. So let's solder that guy on. Maybe. There it is. Another one that's hard to get to. Good. So now the board has been modified to add a, uh, a sixth wire. Oh, yeah, you probably wonder where I got this connector from. Um, I, I stole it from another lighting kit, from another monorail lighting kit. Um, to do this mod, you either need to find somebody who's got another one or, or buy another one. Um, and I just took this wire off of one of the existing ones. All right, so now let's uh, disable the timer on the board. Now, so I'm going to show you how to disable timers on these boards. This the same trick works on all lighting boards. Um, that I definitely do not recommend you doing this for lighting boards that have uh, incandescent lights on. You know, like the buildings, those little street lights in the buildings. Those little street lights will burn out <laughs> um, in about uh, one to two hundred hours um, if uh, if they're left on continuously. That's the reason why the timers are in there. And so, uh, only do this with uh, boards that uh, that uh, um, are running LEDs only. Now, if you look at the board closely, um, when you look at the board closely, let's see if you can see it here. There it is. You're going to see that there's um, this set of pads right here, and on the other side, that's that's where this uh, FET is. That's a that's what turns the lights on and off. Is this, this FET? It's controlled by this this uh, timer circuit here, and so all we're going to do is we're going to um, collect. We're just going to short out the uh, the emitter and the collector of that that FET, um, and uh, and that will permanently turn on the board. Um, and uh, so we just cut ourselves a little piece of uh, of wire. I say a little piece of wire. There it is. <coughs> Let's position it in between those two terminals. The, 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 the as, as you look at it from this side, those are going to be the the right two pins on that transistor, and then we just solder it into into, into place. He said. I'm struggling with this little uh, piece of wire. There it goes. Solder in, baby. There we go. <coughs> so there you have it. Um, that's literally all there is to it. Just let's see if my camera will focus. There you go. So just to short out those two pins. There and there. And now this, and now this board is uh, is now permanently turned on. Um, and like I say. Let me repeat, um, this trick works on all the lighting boards, but please don't do it to your buildings that have those little incandescent streetlights, or you'll find yourself replacing the streetlights about once every month. <laughs> and those are not fun to replace, so that's how you make this change. Now, you're, you're also going to make this same change to 
the marquee. Um, and, uh, and in the marquee video, I'm going to refer you to this one on how to do it. So on the, on the marquee, you're just going to switch out. Uh, you're just going to make the same shorting gesture. And on the marquee, um, I probably won't show you on that video, but on this one, on the marquee, I'm going to, I'm going to have you... Um, um, the, the marquee will have two resistors on its lighting board, and you're going to replace those two resistors with, with uh, the same size resistors that you used on the tree lights to make them the same intensity, and it'll it'll make the the, uh, the LEDs on the uh, the marquee much dimmer, uh, which is good because they are blinding <laughs> as they are as they are uh, out of the box. Um, so there you have it. That's uh, all you need to have for the monorail lighting board. Well, we're back under the table again, and I have run the wires for each of the six uh, columns um, where they belong to the lighting board, and I've drilled a couple of new holes um, in the platform for the uh, to run the the, uh, the monorail wires through. Um, you really have to do that uh, because the wires aren't quite long enough otherwise, and those all run to our new uh, to our newly modified lighting board um, and uh, the lighting board will later when I talk about the electronic assembly the you know, electrical assembly I'll talk about how to attach this but uh, for now it's just hanging here now when we for, for this installation I'm not going to be using the the standard uh, um, uh, power supply that came from Olszewski uh, in the in the monorail kit instead I'm going to be wiring this directly to the the C circuit lighting uh, board. Um, remember uh, when I talked about the tree lighting, um, we, uh, we we were tapping into the power that goes to the C circuit lighting board in the light in the C lighting lighting kit <coughs> to power the tree lights. We're also going to use that same circuit to power the monorail. And so you just take the red and the black wire coming off the lighting board, cut off the um, the uh, connector that goes to the to its standalone power supply, and then uh, splice that red wire to the red wire um, on the C power supply and to the black uh, wire from the C power supply, the, the same way we did it for uh, the tree lighting. And, uh, and in fact, you're going to splice it to exactly the same place. And you know this this avoids an extra power supply. It makes it use a little less power. Um, it's a lot easier to wire later. Um, and uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, makes for a cleaner, tidier uh, installation and, and more reliable too. So again, this is the the C circuit power supply that you're tapping into. Same one we use for the tree lighting. Um, so you can look at that video to see where we did the how we did that. Same two points goes right to the monorail lighting board. And uh, I mean, otherwise it's a uh, it's a pretty easy pretty easy installation. So that's it for the monorail. And there you have it, your monorail gliding along its beam in front of the main entrance to the park. All right, so the 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 moonliner modification we're going to make is pretty easy to do. That um, that uh, first thing you're going to do is unscrew the moonliner from its base with uh, the four screws that hold the battery cover on and the three screws inside. Um, then the moonliner comes right off. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull the LED out of the base of the, of the moonliner. It's just held in there with a piece of tape. Just pull it out. And we're going to use that LED later uh, in the base, uh, in, the, in the platform. Um, and now the next change we're going to make is something that that uh, is a change that I like to make. Um, a lot of collectors will just set the moon lantern like this on their platform with the LED in it, perhaps. Um, that uh, for me, it just felt like it was too high up in the platform, and and uh, that this this base didn't to me um, look completely consistent with the rest of the uh, the, the platform. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the moon lantern off of its base. Um, it'd be nice if that if that little leg would pop off easily, but it doesn't because there's a piece of metal that runs down the leg and then into the uh, into the resin. So we have to go underneath it and uh, and cut the leg off. Um, pretty easy to drum You just uh, come in right underneath it.
<laughs> Makes a little bit of smoke, but uh, uh, we'll clean up that edge when we're done. So anyway, cut the other two legs off, and I'll show you how it cleans up. Okay, so now we have the Moonliner, Moonliner cut off of its base. Um, and now you just work your way around the pads just to clean up the residual uh, plastic that's left. Really, I'll do is just warm it up a little bit, and, uh, and that thin layer of uh, resin will just come right off. There you have it. So uh, that's the first step. And the next step I'll show you uh, out in my shop. Oops. That's the first step. The next step I'll show you out in my shop with uh, with my router. Okay, so now I'm out in my shop and I'm going to use my router. I was too lazy to set up my uh, my router bed, but uh, I'm just going to use a, a router with a with a uh, uh, cutoff bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the router to to separate the uh, the pad area of this of this base from the base itself so I'm going to make a cut which is going to leave me just the central area um, um, so I can put that underneath the moon liner um, I'm, uh, I don't really care about this back piece I'm not going to use this in, in, in the way I display it because um, there really isn't room for it um, behind the astro orbiter so, uh, so I'm going to make that cut and uh, we'll see how this goes now the, the first cut I usually make is not quite deep enough because you don't want to mess up this base um, and you, when you complete the catch you have to be a little careful and I'll show you that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, when you make this cut make sure you have really good hold of this thing because <laughs> it'll go flying otherwise. Alright, here we go. Okay, so uh, due to a, a videotaping error, I missed uh, showing you how the cut went, but the idea with the router was, you know, you, you route around, uh, you're creating this hole underneath, you're, you're routing out the base, uh, and you cut out almost all of it except for just a little piece, because if you cut the whole thing out, then this floating section would go flying through your shop, and that would be bad. So we're going to make this last little cut with a Dremel, um, just to release the last of it. Um, and uh, nothing to it, really. There it is at. Now I'll just clean the base up a little bit. And there it is. So now you're going to have the little pad underneath the rocket, and uh, it sits down uh, very nicely uh, on the platform uh, off of its base piece. And that's how it'll be installed uh, as it sits 
on uh, the platform. Um, there's the the, la the last step is to attach the uh, the LED to the uh, to the lighting, and I'll I'll show you that uh, uh, a little bit later. And here is how the Moonliner looks when it's installed in the platform. I think it's a lot better look with the uh, with the base cut off and uh, and uh, turn the lights off. So there you have the Moonliner. So now we're going to modify the um, the sign of the marquee and if you'll if you look at the front of the marquee you'll see it has this banner on it which is just a piece of paper that pops off pretty easily if it hasn't already um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the sign to add some text in that middle line and uh, personalize the marquee a little bit so um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to that to, to the website that she that you see listed below um, and you're going to download a template file um, uh, just like you did for the uh, for the uh, template for the electrical parade um, and put it on your computer, bring it up in Microsoft Paint or whatever other picture editor you want to use. Paint works fine. <clears throat> and then we're going to rework the sign to uh, to change the text. And uh, I just I do this kind of old school. I just cut and paste the pieces I want. Um, the sign I'm going to I'm going to do now is just going to say Happy Birthday uh, across the top. And the way you change the sign is you just find a character that you like, like in this case H starts happy birthday, so I'm just going to cut and paste the H out, All right, and then drag the H over where it belongs over here. All right, good. <clears throat> so have, that's the H, let's try, to, let's try to A. That's not quite right. right yeah, hopefully you can see what's going on here. Okay. Cut and paste. Now we have P. Uh, let's see. Is there, there's P over here. Good. You'll find that most of the characters exist. Um, that uh, now, if you run across a character that doesn't exist, I'll show you what to do here in a second. Get this P placed. Okay, um, I'll be back in a second, and I'll show you about a character that doesn't exist. Okay, so I've been editing the text of my sign and run across the first character I don't have. If you look at the whole sign, there's no B <laughs> anywhere in the sign. Um, and so we get to make a B. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next closest character I can find, which I think looks like this R, and I'm going to just copy that and put it in position. All right. And then we look for something that looks like the bottom part of a B, um, and uh, probably the closest thing we have is the top part of this R. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to paste out the top part of the R. I'm going to drop that on the bottom part of the B, and see what that looks like. Huh? Not too bad. Now the bottom part of the B is a little bit distorted, so I'm going to take uh, the bottom part of a D over here. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to drop that on the bottom part of the B. And that should clean up my B. Oops. Not quite good enough. Actually, the shape of the D is not quite right. So what other character works better for that? I really, what I want to do is clean up this edge over here. 
and uh, let's see. Um, you just look around, you'll find something that looks right. I think I'm just going to take the corner of the R. Let's see what that looks like when I drop it on there. Not what I want. Oh, I know what to do. I'll try. Just take out the middle of the R. That looks pretty good. Definitely know it's a B. <laughs> so that's the idea is that you just, uh, if you run across a character you don't have, just make one. And uh, um, most, of the cover, most of the characters are already covered, but uh, um, and then just uh, work your way through the sign, make it say what you want, and then I'll show you how to print it. So now that you got the sign the way you want it, with all the text in the way you like, then just uh, save it to your hard drive, and uh, and then open it with uh, your favorite uh, photo viewer, and we're going to print this in the same way that we printed the um, uh, template for the electrical parade and uh, uh, we're going to print it a couple of times using normal paper um, just to make sure the size is right um, but when we're ready to, to do the final print we're going to print on the, some of this stuff which is a, a special paper that's designed has a sticky background it's made by Folex uh, and it's called Sticky Jet. It's really just a, a photo paper that's got uh, a, a sticky background, um, a sticky backing to it. In fact, it's the same paper, as far as I can tell, as Olszewski used to print the original ones. And so you're going to load that in your printer and then print. So uh, let me load the paper and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the paper loaded and now it's uh, time to print. Um, this is going to print just like we printed the templates for the electrical parade with two exceptions. One is we're going to print this in a 4x6 format because that's how I made the original template is in 4x6. Um, and this time we're going to say fit the picture to the frame. We didn't do that last time. This time we're going to do it that way. Um, that will make it print the right size. And uh, let it rip. Okay, so here's the hard copy that came out. I'm just going to check to make sure that they're the same size as they were supposed to be. Double check. And they are. Uh, this is the sign, of course, that came off of the original marquee. So now just to cut the thing out, pull the backing off, stick it on the sign, and your marquee is uh, personalized and uh, finished. Here are the changes we're going to make to the marquee lighting board. And uh, um, like I, like I said, the marquee LEDs tend to be blindingly bright in the front of Main Street, especially compared to the, all of the lights around it, uh, the building lights and others. So we're going to dim them down by replacing the two resistors on the board. And uh, um, that's pretty easily done. You just turn the board over and you'll see their contacts. Just pull off any hot glue that uh, might be uh, on them. So you'll be able to get your soldering iron on them. All right, good enough. And then uh, use your solder sucker to pull the solder off. off just go in and usually wiggle the the uh, leads loose usually 
Good. Now on this side of the board, just pull the resistors out. He said. Oop, there they go. Sometimes you need to cut off a little bit of the edge. There we go. Okay, now the old solders, the old resistors are out. Now we put the new ones in. These are the same resistors we used uh, for the tree lighting. Just convenient, you have a bunch from here, so you must use them. Alright, just to make sure we find the same holes. That was a lucky guess. Now we'll do the other one. Notice these little lithe water resistors fit in here better <laughs> than the uh, clunky old uh, quarter watts that were in there. Alright. Solder the new ones. Excess. Hang on to one of these excess wires, we'll use it in a second. Like I showed you with the monorail, um, we're going to also disable the timer on the marquee. Um, just didn't make any sense to me that it turns off, so we're going to, because you know, it's outside the park. Yeah, the buildings, you can understand turning those off, but I don't think they ever turn the marquee off, <laughs> as I remember. So we're going to disable the timer. Now remember too what I said is that, is that don't disable the timers on the buildings, at least not the ones that have those little uh, um, street lights on, because the street lights um, will burn out <laughs> if you leave them on for very long. I think their life is only like 200 hours or something very short. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said with the, with the monorail, and find this transistor, so we'll FET, and you're going to short out the, you're going to jumper together the right hand two leads. That's where the uh, emitter and collector go. So we're just going to take a little piece of wire, drop it on there, and solder it in place. Now this little piece of wire usually jumps around on me. Let's see if I get lucky this time. Nope. Alright, there it is. Alright, so now with this little jumper in place, the marquee will stay lit up all the time. Which I think makes sense. But now remember what I said, don't make this change for the boards that have those incandescent light bulbs and those little street light bulbs. Otherwise they'll burn out and you'll be very unhappy with me. So don't. I'll only make this change for pieces that have um, um, LEDs only, um, such as the monorail and the, and the marquee. And let's see if I can show you this jumper a little better. It's right, it's right there between those two pins. Okay, that's uh, those are the two changes you need to make to the electronics board on the marquee. And uh, now on to customizing the sign itself. Oh, yeah, just one more comment on the the sign here before I before I uh, stop on the on the marquee. You notice that the original marquee is a sign as it came off the marquee is kind of faded um, and uh, I'm not sure why that's happening it may be because the the inks they used or or maybe the paper or maybe the handling I don't know what but uh, in the version that 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 I've done um, which is actually a photographic copy of the original but with the contrast cranked up um, it's a lot darker a little more uh, a little more uh, high contrast obviously um, and it, it looks a lot better on the sign, so that's the reason why they're cranked up. And if you're wondering why I had five versions of the thing on a piece of paper, it's just so I had a couple to cut on in case I goofed one up, like I did this one. <laughs> so uh, they're just a couple of spares. Um, and you can also do the reverse side of the marquee too, which I don't do because they're in the platform, and you really can't see the back side of it. Um, so there's that. Oh yeah, and just one last little tip, um, is that when you go to reattach this onto the marquee, 
Um, I put a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of uh, contact cement on the marquee part itself uh, just to get a little more adhesive because these little signs are having trouble sticking to the marquees. So I put a little contact cement on the marquee itself um, and that plus the adhesive that comes on the back of the sticker will be more than enough to keep it there uh, forever. So, all right, that, is, that really is it for the marquee. Uh, all right, thanks.